We have a partly Earth-directed solar storm, a coronal hole giving us some fast solar wind, and two new bright regions. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely getting interesting. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see back on the 18th and the 19th, you can see a bit of a poof in the northern hemisphere. That was a stealthy solar storm that was launched, and it is partly Earth-directed, even though most of it's going north of us. But we could expect to get a glancing blow from it any time between now and the next day or so. Now, on top of that, we also have a coronal hole. It's kind of an upside-down horseshoe-looking coronal hole with the first first part of it beginning to rotate into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or two. So that's going to be right on the heels of this glancing solar storm hit, and that could enhance the impact and give us some aurora down easily to high latitudes, possibly a skosh into mid latitudes for a short little while. Now on top of that, we have region 2767. This is a new cycle sunspot, and it's rotating into the Earth strike zone, and you can see it fizzling and farting a little bit there. It's not a big risk for flares but it has managed to boost that solar flux back up into the 70s. So we are now back into the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. And we have another bright region on the sun's far side. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux is low. However, you do see right around the 20th a slight rise in the X-ray flux. This is region 2767 as it began to rotate into Earth view. Sure enough, it started popping up that X-ray flux and even giving a few little micro flares. Pop, 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 pop. You see them here and there. And that has been just enough to raise that solar flux up to the marginal range for radio propagation. We're sitting in the low 70s right now, and this is easily going to continue over the next week. It possibly may rise a little bit more as we see yet another active region rotate into Earth view here pretty soon. Switching to our solar storm conditions, for the most part over the past couple weeks we've been pretty quiet except when a solar storm hit us back on the 14th. Wham! You can see it hitting there and it kept us up to active conditions, geez, for almost half a day, which gave us some gorgeous aurora, especially with the Neowise comet. It brought those views clear down to mid-latitudes and I'll highlight just a few here in a short bit. But then sadly, it was almost as soon as it was here it began to fade and by the 16th we were back to quiet conditions and we've been staying at quiet conditions and continue to stay at quiet conditions. But luckily we do have that other solar storm that should be hitting us momentarily and it could bump us back up to active conditions. Don't know if it's going to be as good as the storm that we just had, but aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, be sure to keep your batteries charged. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, this is Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right with this yellow circle. Now you can see that solar storm being launched and it looks like it's a direct hit for Earth, but believe it or not, the bulk of this solar storm is going north of us, but it will be followed by a fast solar wind stream. So it's gonna be kind of a one-two punch and the impact time is late on the 23rd, which looks like it's a little bit early because uh, I think the storm's a little bit overdue, but we should be anticipating some kind of hit any time now, and it could easily last over the next day or two as we also get the impact from that, from that fast wind stream right hot on its heels. And with the recent solar storm that we've had, even though it hasn't been all that strong, we've had Comet Neowise, and it has just absolutely made all the difference. We've had field reporters, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, getting shots of a lifetime. Now, I can't possibly highlight all of the field reports I've seen, so what I'm gonna do is show some this week, and then I'll show some more next week, because there's just too many to pass up. So during this gorgeous solar storm over this past week, we've had beautiful shots like this one from Ontario, and it was seen in British Columbia, and we had multiple shots in Manitoba, Canada, and it was all over Saskatchewan. Oh my gosh, I had a hard time trying to pick which ones to show this week. <laughs> and we have more shots than I can tell you in Alberta. 
And believe it or not, the solar storm, even though we didn't reach storm conditions, the storm was strong enough to drop Aurora down into the United States. We saw it on webcams in Maine, and it was seen in Michigan, and it was also seen in Minnesota, multiple places in Minnesota. More next week. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at Stereo's view, you can see in the southern hemisphere, that bright region, that's region 2767 that has rotated into Earth view. And as it rotated into Stereo's view, it was firing off a few solar storms here and there. Now it's just kind of going pop, 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 pop with a few little paparazzi bulbs, not even enough to be considered flare material, but it does uh, have enough oomph to boost that solar flux for us, but I don't think we're going to get any more solar storms from it, at least not right now. But look at the monster in the north! Have you been watching? This thing looks angry! It's fired off a couple solar storms off to the north, and I'm seeing a lot of broiling and broiling, so we're very interested to see this region rotate more into Stereo's view, see if it launches some more solar storms, because it sure could, and it might actually be a flare contender tender. But we definitely know it's going to be boosting that solar flux even more and higher into the marginal range for radio propagation when it rotates into Earth view in about four days or so. Switching to our moon, we are now passing out of the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 27th, the moon should be about 45% illuminated. So now is a good time to catch those dim objects in the sky, like maybe Comet Neowise or some Aurora. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that hit from that solar storm that's partly Earth-directed. It could be a glancing blow, but remember, it's also going to have a fast wind chaser. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm, and that should settle down a little bit as we move into the next week. At mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions, but we have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. Storm, but don't expect this to last very long. As a matter of fact, we'd probably quiet down before we even get through the weekend. But don't worry, if you're an Aurora photographer and you don't happen to catch anything, you might get another chance as next week we have yet the second part of that coronal hole that could be sending us some more fast solar wind. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a bright region on Earth-facing disk, that is region 2767, but it is not firing any big flares, so we have no risk for radio blackouts. So this should make GPS reception on Earth's day side very nice, but we do have a nice boost as well to the solar flux. We are back into the low 70s for solar flux, which means marginal radio radio propagation on Earth's day side, and as we move into the following week, we will see that solar flux continue to rise possibly into the mid-70s as that new region rotates into Earth view as well. So this should give you amateur radio operators and emergency responders a really nice reprieve. Enjoy this while it lasts. Now also because we're at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than we'd like it to be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely getting a bit interesting. We have an Earth-directed solar storm that's going to be followed by a fast wind chaser, and that could bring some aurora, especially to high latitudes and possibly down into mid-latitudes over the next couple days. So your aurora photographers, if you're especially at, you're at high latitudes, keep your batteries charged, because you might get some more show, especially with Comet Neowise still kind of fading into the distance. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you too have something to to celebrate because we do have a bright region on the Earth-facing disk. In fact, it is a real sunspot. It's one of the new cycle sunspots that's really managing to maintain, and it has boosted that solar flux. We're back into the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and we have another region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next uh, less than a week or so. So we could be in the mid-70s by mid-next week. So keep that uh, DX flowing. Now on top of that, 
you GPS users, well, you know, things are going pretty well for you. We have this uh, small solar storm that's going to be hitting over the next couple days, but overall, these two bright regions aren't doing all that much when it comes to radio blackouts or even having a risk for that. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora during that solar storm, your GPS reception should look pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.